this is Doxy Mom, and welcome back to my channel. If you haven't done so already, I'd greatly appreciate it if you hit that little red subscribe button. You can ring the bell for notifications, and if you like this video, just give it a thumbs up. Well, Miss Peanut, Miss Indy, and I, we're here to bring you the news in 15 minutes or less, so let's get started. Now, the Gateway Pundit, they are reporting that Solomon Samuel Simone, a.k.a. Raz, is the proclaimed warlord of Chaz. You know, the six blocks of Seattle that Antifa has taken over illegally. Now, Raz hates America, but owns multiple guns, luxury cars, and millions in real estate. And Raz is supported by the Islamic government in Dubai. Hmm. Now, Raz has been identified running guns in Chaz. Raz owns several handguns and six semi-automatic rifles, including an AR-15, an AK-47, and an Uzi. And they have armor-piercing bullets for these guns. This is horrible. Now, Raz also owns a BMW, a Tesla, and a Jaguar. He owns some prime real estate and rental properties, and CNN's Oliver, Oliver Darcy, well, he's helped shape Raz's image into a gangster. Now, Raz is being sponsored and has been hosted by the Dubai government. He's an anti-white, anti-American Muslim, and he's running Chaz. This can't be good, guys. And guys, this isn't a joke. And to the loony leftist mayor of Seattle, this isn't a summer of love. This is a hostile takeover of her city. These people aren't going away in a few weeks or a few months. They are planning on staying forever. Now, I reported on this the other day where there are Antifa autonomous zones in Europe dating back to the 1980s. And what's the answer? Honestly, Guys, I don't know. Uh, if Trump, you know, he's going to look really bad if he sends the troops in and people get shot and killed, and they probably will. The bikers for Trump and other bikers, they're talking about a July 4th takeover. But, guys, I'm scared Antifa will use fatal booby traps and armor-piercing bullets, and patriots will die. Because, mark my words, there's probably going to be bloodshed there. So, I don't know what the answer is. I'm wondering if the governor and the mayor really understand this situation, or could they be in on this? Now, I have the feeling the good people of Seattle don't have a clue that Antifa isn't planning on giving back their city. And think about the downtown business owners and the people living in that area. Now, they have worked and saved their hard-earned money to buy their homes and their businesses. And now, a group of terrorists have just come in and taken it and won't give it back. And then, who are you going to call? You can't call the police. You can't call the mayor. You can't call the governor. Because they think this is a game. Well, when you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. So we all need to be praying for a peaceful resolution. Because personally, I don't see this ending well. But I honestly believe that President Trump will not allow Chaz to be there forever. And, you know, if, if, it, if nothing else, millions of Americans are witnessing the stupidity of the Democrats. Now, people say that you can't fix stupid, but we can vote them all out come November. And I'll leave a link. Now, here's an interesting story from NeonNettle.com. The liberal mayor of Olympia, Washington. I don't know what's going on in this state, guys. Anyway, their mayor, Cheryl, Cheryl Selby, expressed public support for Black Lives Matters and, and leftist protesters calling to defund the police. However, she quickly changed her tune when rioters targeted her own home. Now, after her home was vandalized by BLM protesters, the governor blasted the attack as domestic terrorism. Hmm. Now, the mayor said this. It's unfair. I'm really trying to process this. It hurts when you're giving so much to your community. 
Well, Mayor Selby, how do you think others feel when their mayor supports terrorist organizations and the only people that can help you is the police, but you don't support them either? Guys, I've said this all along. If rioters go after the people in charge, then quickly uh, those people are going to change their attitudes. When Antifa and BLM are incorporated into your protest, then you can forget about having a peaceful protest. Mayors, governors, please wake up. When you support these groups, you're literally playing with fire. And I'll leave a link. Now, another leftist organization being targeted is the UK's liberal left-leaning newspaper, The Guardian. Neon Nettle is reporting that the pro-Black Lives Matter newspaper sided with the Confederate states during the American Civil War, which uh, started all this backlash. 12,000 people have signed a petition to have The Guardian shut down due to its historical links to slavery. The news comes a week after Winston Churchill's statue was vandalized by BLM rioters. Now, London Assembly member David Curtin said, The Guardian was founded using money from slave labor. By its own logic, it should abolish itself. Now, guys, I don't like The Guardian, and I would love to see this fake news rag bite the dust, but not this way. We are in very dangerous territory, and apparently Antifa and Black Lives Matter, they don't care whose side you're on. They will take what they want when they want it. They must be shut down. And all I know to tell you is we have got to get in prayer with our Lord above. We need to ask Jesus to, to use us and, and wh whatever he tells us to do, then that's what we need to be doing because we need warriors. We need soldiers. We need truth tellers to spread the word. And we need p good people running for political offices. And we need prayer warriors. We always need those. But remember, guys, God is on our side. And in the end, God will wins. So stay strong in the Lord, patriots. Keep up the good fight. Keep a positive attitude and know you are on the winning side. Now, we've still got a long ways to go in this war, many battles to fight, but we will win the war. And here's your daily reminder to keep President Trump and his family in your prayers. Pray for 17 in the team. Pray for our military and all their families and all of those who are fighting to save our country and our world. Now, Breitbart, they're reporting that federal prosecutors are considering filing criminal charges against former Trump National Security Advisor John Bolton if his soon-to-be-released memoir contains classified information. And guys, that's exactly what they should do. Now, in the meantime, the DOJ has asked a federal judge to block the publication of Bolton's upcoming book because the classified information could compromise national security. Now, the White House told Bolton's legal team in January that the significant amount of classified information must be removed if the book is to be published. Michael Ellis, the NSC's Director of Intelligence, has reviewed the book and is stating that classified information is still in the book. And if Bolton publishes it, he is in violation. So guys, I'll leave a link and keep you posted. But if John Bolton does release his trashy book, I won't be buying it. Now I'm going to leave you with Isaiah chapter 42, verses 13 through 17 that say, The Lord will march out like a champion, like a warrior he will stir up his zeal. With a shout he will raise the battle cry and will triumph over his enemies. For a long time I have kept silent. I have been quiet and held myself back. But now, like a woman in childbirth, I cry out, I gasp and pant. I will lay waste the mountains and hills and dry up all their vegetation. I will turn rivers into islands and dry up the pools. 
I will lead the blind by ways they have not known. Along unfamiliar paths, I will guide them. I will turn the darkness into light before them and make the rough places smooth. These are the things I will do. I will not forsake them. But those who trust in idols, who say to images, you are our gods, will be turned back in utter shame. Well, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please feel free to share my content. And until next time, this is Doxy Mom, and God bless you all.